this request for quick tip is really straightforward. The person asks, how do you manage to paint rocks with water gushing over them? A very simple request, a little tricky answer. Well, the sermon I usually preach is the same sermon I'm going to preach with this one. That is, we've got to use our observation. And not only use our observation, but describe to ourselves what we're seeing in the way of visual elements. Now, here we have gushing water, water gushing over rocks, which is what the person asked for. Uh, but then we've got something else, too. We have this portion that feels more in shadow, and we have a lot more light reflecting on this water. So we've got to... Uh, revise the way we look at that and not look for rocks and water but look for guess what where the light how the light is hitting and what causes the value how it's causing us to see the values we're seeing and the colors we're seeing not only that but this time we've got a movement involved in it so in order to, to really render something like this or interpret something like that that is alive, it doesn't look like stiff brush strokes, then it would be better to lay a little foundation. So if I squint at this, and let me show you just a, a little traditional way to go about uh, interpreting what we're seeing. I'm just going to use this part right in here because it's a short, quick tip. So we're not going to do a whole painting of that. But if you squint in this right here, what do you see? I see a very, very dark value, and then I see all these are relatively dark but they're varying in value and then these are a little bit lighter so that this is more in shadow over the light the way the light is hitting uh, these areas this falls more in shadow so the light is a little bit higher up and this falls more in light it's catching more light now rushing water is going to catch light we've got millions and millions of little bitty bubbles and they're all reflecting light back uh, but we can't think about that part of it when we're trying to create a three, a two-dimensional interpretation of a three-dimensional image. So the best way to do that is to, first of all, look at it in terms of what's happening in value. And so I'm going to just plot that. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing this part right here in a darker value, as I said. And these are a, uh, these are in the dark value at range two, but they vary in value. So I'm just going in and here I'm just using a mixture of, uh, in this case it's ultramarine blue and um, Rembrandt transparent oxide red because those two give me a nice uh, a neutral now, and we need more or less a neutral hue there and it's sort of uh, leaning a little bit more towards blue uh, in that neutral hue. So let's see, in one way if you really want to get technical or really want to be precise in a study you can do or any, even when you're painting you can do something like this where you you mix a value of a color and they put a little uh, a little splotch on a piece of paper and you hold it up and say all right am i in the right value range i am for that because when i set the foundation or you might call this the block in for interpreting this i need that dark to go on to the canvas a little bit darker because I'm going to go on top of it with lighter color so I want a little bit of that darker color to show through so I would like this value the values I'm seeing to range close to where I am here but a little bit darker now that's just a technical thing that's not a recipe for how to it's just a technical thing that works well with oil painting works well well actually it works well it doesn't work the same way in watercolor because you approach it differently uh, and if you work fast before the paint dries, it'll work the same way with acrylic. Uh, so anyway, I'm using oil here. And so what I'm going to do there, and I'm just going to look at that general area, and I'm just going to block in quickly uh, the shape of the general area of dark I'm seeing there. And you see, I'm not, I'm just looking at the dark portion. I'm not being specific there about how the shape and the value changes. 
I just want to get that general block in in the shape I'm seeing it right here and, and as it comes over here you see if it, the dark part of it falls out just a little bit right there and then it gets a little bit lighter and I'll just raise my value uh, that's the reason I like uh, starting with a value line of each of my colors like this because then I can move back and forth in these value lines to pick up the values I need I don't have to be fussing with white and trying to adjust values as I go so here is a little bit lighter let's get that even even lighter than we have it now um, right in here you see that gets a little bit lighter as it goes out and drops out there and you can see up here it gets just a little bit lighter you see as it's coming in this direction it gets a little bit lighter there now I'm going to go in and put the dark in I'll rinse the brush out for this because uh, if I don't rinse the brush out I won't get that dark I won't be able to control that dark so I rinse the brush out and when you rinse the brush you always dry it thoroughly otherwise you'll have it too wet and the, and the color won't flow the way you want it to so I'll go right over here and you see this is pretty dark right there so I'm going to go over into the darkest without white in it the darkest colors I have here like that and I'm just going to block that in where I see it so I see a, a little bit darker bit right in here uh, I see a little bit darker bit right in there so I'll just sort of put that in why didn't I bring that down right there oh I know what I was leaving I was leaving space for that dark for the so I'll just sort of and I've just blocked that in pretty much in the shape that I see it then the values that are in front of it I will go a little bit lighter with like right in here and I will pull the brush uh, in the direction I see them I see that movement moving like that so I'll just pull the brush in that direction now that will give me a block in for this section now if I were doing this section I would do the same way except I block in the darks that I, like, like I have here I'd block in those darks darker so I, I would do the whole area the same way I would block in with the darker values where I'm seeing the darker values and uh, squinting by squinting at that then you can see where to put those now get those a little bit blended because they are so I'll just blend the edges just of those just a little bit like that now for the splashing water part I'm rinsing the brush really really good here and again we're looking for value now some people assume but you should never assume when you're painting some people assume and because it's splashing foam you just use white paint and just splash white paint I've seen that so many times it doesn't communicate anything it just goes flat now what we're seeing there is we're seeing a lot of variation in value and some variation in color so what we're seeing in this area right here I squint again and what I'm really seeing in those areas right in here um, are variations that that falls more in the middle value range well, what I want to do there is I want to start that feeling of falling or gushing gushing was the word the person used we'll start that feeling of gushing water and so I will hold the brush this is more or less scumble where paint goes on top of paint and so to make that happen effectively we hold the brush more uh, a flatter rather than straight out like that we hold it flatter to the surface so I uh, pick up a value and see I'm checking on my brush to be sure I'm in that value range I want to be in now where what direction is that moving I'm seeing this stuff go across there that is sort of just moving in this direction right here so I'll make the brush move in that direction and then I see as it moves in this direction I see a movement coming like that so let's, let's check the value and let's just move it like that I didn't have quite enough paint on it you must have a if you have too much paint it goes on too much goes on so we have, have to get that all right have to get the, just the right amount of paint so just like that now I'll make what else will I do the movement here the movement changes that's what happens with gushing water you see the movement changing and so you identify the direction you see those movements uh, in, in which you see those movements going you make the brush move with it okay what's happening right over here I see this sort of thing happening sort of like that and what I see happening right here I see a little bit stronger one coming over that way and let's see over in here I see it a little bit more like that oh, what I see happening in here I see a little bit more of like that now when 
sometimes you can you can you can identify that movement better by going from up and down or sometimes you can identify it better when you have like variations in there by using the tip of the brush to do it sort of like that um let's see go over here where i see it lighter i'll pick up a little bit more light and let's we have a little bit of, the water's not as light as it comes over that rock so i'm going over into the darker version right there and just let it scumble over that and allow a little bit of that rock to pop through and here same thing there and there and there now i've got the direction and it continue to move that way to uh, to uh, interpret which is what you're doing you interpret the direction now i'm going a little bit lighter now now we can begin to look at that the splashing uh portion of it and so i will go into the lighter light and hold the brush more like this. I'm going to brace it against my hand uh, on the canvas here and just sort of let it splash. And get a little bit more of that. Splash it up over the corner of the brush. See, splash, push. I, I hit it and push it. Splash it up. Don't want, um, don't want quick strokes there. Splash it up a little bit more here. Maybe have a little bit of a, a falling, that falling light coming in that direction there. Uh, let's see, we have a little bit of that coming here, here. And we're just about to get that gushing feeling that the person asked for. Uh, and we could put a little bit more like right there. And just a little bit, a little bit of paint hit. And uh, how, we could have some real splashes. Now you won't really be able to see. I'm kind of cheating a little bit going up and grabbing some stuff from the top there. But you won't really be able to see because we don't have anything dark behind it for you to see it against. But say the splashes sort of like that and then and down in here uh, we do a similar thing where we just uh, load the lighter color on the brush and just let it splash splash up just let the brush push the brush up just let it splash up and then get those variations in value going let's get a little bit more of that and that and I think I'll get just a little bit lighter value. Uh, pick up just some white. Now is the time to pick up just pure white. And just let it sit there. Kind of uh, stamp it on with the brush. Instead of moving the brush. Where you see these little splashes going on here. So you're just hitting it with the brush. And take the corner of the brush. And kind of push it a little bit. Variations on that. Practice that. Uh, practice it when you're not painting. <laughs> Let's get some. Okay, we can go on and on. But practice it when you're not painting. Practice, uh, practice observing and let this guide you. You always, let your, you always let your subject guide you. If you try to paint by formulas, you're going to paint the same thing over and over again, and it's going to become dead. Uh, but it, and I won't go into who does it. But if you allow your, your reference, where, whatever you're looking at, if you allow, allow that to guide you, you know what you're looking for? You're looking for areas of value, how, how light, how dark is it, how is it moving, and the question is how do, you, uh, how do you load your brush, how do you move your brush to make that happen. Give it a try, and I bet you can do it too. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there. Some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.